This is 14.2 Gastrointestinal Tract Part 1 Notes. The essential question is, what are the features and functions of the organs of the alimentary canal? Remember that the digestive tract is also called alimentary canal or gastrointestinal tract. It extends from the mouth to the anus and it is a passageway for food. So the food actually have to come in contact with it and the food has to pass through it. It is a tube organs connected together. The mouth is opening into the oral cavity. The oral cavity is a space that is uh, enclosed by the lips and the teeth anteriorly. And behind the oral cavity, remember, is the oral pharynx, which is part of the throat. The roof of the mouth is the palate, and the floor is comprised of muscle of the tongue. The oral cavity also contains accessory organs such as teeth, salivary glands, and tonsils, and the tongue. Mechanical digestion starts in the mouth by mastication, which is chewing of the food by the teeth. Then also there is mixing of food with saliva by the tongue and the walls of the oral cavity to make a bolus, and bolus is a clump of a food. And... Chemical digestion also occurs by the presence of enzymes inside the saliva, and those saliva is created uh, produced by the salivary gland. And the beginning of starch digestion occurs in the mouth. The mucosa, remember, produces mucus, which is going to also coat the bolus for either to make it slippery so that it can pass easier down the elementary or the GI tract. The initiation of deglutition occurs, which is swallowing. So once the bolus has been created and some starch digestion has occurred, then the back of the throat or the oral cavity and the pharynx is going to allow it to press down into the back and then get swallowed into the pharynx, which will then lead to the esophagus. The tongue also has a bunch of uh, taste buds, allows for a sense of taste, and the tonsils allows it for the immune function. Remember that tonsils act as filters for any kind of pathogens or any kind of harmful materials. So here's a diagram showing you kind of how the swallowing occurs and what is the association with the respiratory tract and the um, the digestive tract. So when you have a bolus of food, which is in green in here in the mouth, notice that the, um, the teeth and the lips is closed to keep that area, the food in that area. But eventually, but eventually after the food has been turned into a bolus, then it's going to go into the oral pharynx, which is the behind the, um, the oral cavity. And then notice that the swallowing reflex is created by the soft palate and the, the tongue kind of pushes the food into the pharynx. Notice during swallowing, the, the soft palate kind of covers up the, the passageway, passageway to the nasopharynx, which is above the oropharynx. And then the food, the physical presence of the bolus food pushes down on the epiglottis, which covers up the trachea, which is in the front. And then the only place that the bolus of food can go is the esophagus, which is behind the trachea. Remember that pharynx is an, another word for pharynx is the throat. The oropharynx and the laryngopharynx are part uh, is a passageway for food, water, and air, whereas nasopharynx, which is just posterior to the nasal cavity, is only a passage for air. So during deglutition or swallowing, notice when there is bolus of food, that soft palate will close off the uh, passageway to the nasopharynx so that the food does not go up into the nasal cavity. And then also... The food will then push down on the epiglottis, will close off the opening to the glottis or the trachea, and then the food will pass down into the esophagus where it's supposed to. 
the food from the pharynx will lead into the esophagus. Esophagus is located just behind the trachea. They're like right in, the trachea is directly in front of it and esophagus is directly behind it. And unlike the trachea, the esophagus is a collapsible. So when there is no food passing through it, it is kind of flattened out and then only extends out or opens up when there is food passing through it. And there is no digestive function for the esophagus. It is just a passageway for food and water. And the reason why esophagus is there is because without the esophagus, the stomach would directly be attached to the oral cavity and that would cause problems. The stomach is the next organ that receives the food from the esophagus. It is located on the left side in the upper, upper abdominal region, uh, specifically in the left hypochondriac region of the nine regions we discussed earlier. And the food enters the stomach from the esophagus and it must pass a sphincter called the cardioesophageal sphincter and this prevents food from coming back up from the stomach and entering back into the esophagus because once the food is, is in the stomach it mixes with the acid of the stomach and if it comes back up into the esophagus it will burn the lining of the esophagus. Stomach on the other hand have a protection against the acid so it doesn't burn it. So when you have a problem with your cardioesophageal sphincter, then you have a condition called an acid reflux, or it's called GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. And um, that could be, you know, give you heartburn and things like that. The food then will empty from the stomach into the duodenum, which is the small, uh, the first portion, the beginning portion of the small intestine. And the junction between the stomach and the small intestine, there is a pyloric sphincter, which controls when the food from the stomach will enter the small intestine. In the line, inner lining of the stomach, there is a structure called rugae, which are the folds of the stomach. Just like the esophagus, when there is no food in the stomach, it is collapsed. And so you will see rugae. When the stomach is filled with food, it stretches out and the rugae disappears. Stomach is a J-shaped organ. It acts as a storage tank for food. It's a temporary storage. By the time you eat the food and the time it takes for the emptying of the food into the small intestine, it takes about four to six hours. About the time, notice that every meal when you get hungry is about four to six hours. Um, hours that correlates with the emptying of the stomach. The food will mix with the gastric juices to form what is called the chyme. Chyme is a watery food mixture. Gastric juices is made up of combination of the stomach acid and the enzyme that helps digestion. The mechanical digestion that occurs in the stomach is called churning, which means that the muscles of the stomach, uh, stomach are twisting the stomach and then kind of smashing it, crushing the food, and then it's also allowing the mixture of the food with the gastric juices. Chemical digestion occurs by the enzyme that break down protein, and protein digestion begins in the stomach. Regions of the stomach... The cardiac region is the portion that is nearest to the heart, and so, and usually when there is um, acid reflux where the stomach acid is coming up and burning the, the esophagus, it kind of happens right around that area, uh, around the heart. That's why some people think it's burning the heart, but technically it is burning the esophagus, the lining of the esophagus. Fundus is this dome-shaped area. And when the gastric juices are in the stomach, uh, it is the area where it's filled with gas. Because of gravity, the level of the gas, on, uh, the acid only goes up to that portion. So that is the fundus. And sometimes we release that gas in the form of a burp. The body is the main portion in the yellow. 
uh, and the pylorus or the pyloric region is the funnel narrowing portion of the stomach which will then eventually lead into the small intestine. The valve that is found between the stomach and the small intestine is the pyloric sphincter and the valve between the esophagus and the stomach is the cardioesophageal sphincter. There is no absorption of any food nutrients but the only absorption would be water and some um, alcohol um, and some vitamins and aspirin. And so when you drink on an empty stomach, you're more likely to get drunk is because then the alcohol gets directly absorbed through the stomach lining and then you get drunk faster. Also, this is the reason why if you eat aspirin, I'll take a lot of aspirin. Acid, aspirin is an acid material. So if you take aspirin, in an empty stomach, it gets um, absorbed directly and so then it could irritate the lining of the stomach also. 14.2 notes homework. Number one, where do chemical digestion of protein and starch start? Number two, what organs are responsible for mechanical digestion? Number three, draw and label the regions of the stomach, including the sphincter associated with them, sphincters associated with them.